Thank you very much for being here today. I'd like to invite you to find a seat. And uh, we'll go ahead and go over our bulletin real quickly today. Uh, just to look at a couple of our announcements. Uh, if you're a visitor with us today and you have small children, in the back of your bulletin there's a list of all of our children's ministries that are available to you. And on the inside, if you find your attendance card... It looks something like this, if you could fill that out. Uh, just your first name, your last name, and uh, if you drop that in the offering plate as a record of your attendance, we would greatly appreciate that. Uh, let's go ahead and look at a couple of our announcements. Tonight is our business meeting, and it will be at 5 o'clock. Did everybody do good with the, uh, the, time, the, the daylight savings? Uh, did anybody wake up in a frantic fright that you might have be late for church? Uh, I know that we had a little scare, small one. My wife's phone did not reset. Mine did, and so I was not alarmed. I assured her I have the correct time. So uh, she said, it's 9.15. We've got to go. We're going to miss life group. I said, no, we're not. We're going to be okay. I have the correct time. So uh, we had a small scare, not too bad. Uh, but tonight at 5 p.m., there will be our business meeting and no regularly scheduled service. Uh, so if you'd like to attend with us, you're more than welcome. We'll just go over a couple uh, notes about the church uh, this quarter. Uh, for ladies, there's the Tuesday, November the 14th at 6.30 p.m., the glimpses of God's goodness. And Judy's going to come in a couple minutes uh, just to give us an announcement about that. Uh, but, so she wants to tell you more information about that. If you want more information, you can see Judy or my uh, mom, Denise Austin, uh, and they would be happy to tell you more about that event. Young at Heart is going to be November the 16th at the International House of Prayer uh, in Lawrence, otherwise known as IHOP. Uh, one of the best restaurants around. I love pancakes, so I'm there. Uh, so uh, I hope to see you there on November the 16th. You can meet us there at the restaurant at 1 p.m. or here at the church for a ride at 12.30. Uh, the appreciation dinner will be November the 19th at 5 p.m. I would like to honor you for your service here at the church, and so I would like to invite you to be there. There will be no regularly scheduled, uh, scheduled service uh, for that evening as well. Uh, Thanksgiving communion service will be t Tuesday, uh, November 21st at 7 p.m., and there will be no Wednesday night service following that. Uh, so we hope that you have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, I also, I have a card here, just to finish up, from Sam Wolchi. He appreciates everybody who's been praying for him and giving him calls and cards, and he says, thank you very much for all your prayers and visits while he was in the hospital after eating too much pork. Uh, so, made him a little sick, but he's better now. We're glad to see him, and I appreciate that card. Judy's going to come in and give us an announcement, just more information about glimpses of God's goodness, and then we'll sing another song. I don't know if you picked up one of these uh, announcements about the ladies' uh, meeting, but I just noticed that the first time it says, Ladies, you are incited to share your own glimpse of God's goodness. Instead of invited, it says incited. So I'm here to incite you to come to this meeting because it's going to be exciting as we share glimpses of God's goodness. Uh, on November 14th at 6.30 p.m. in the fellowship hall, as we recount and tell aloud all his marvelous works and wonderful deeds, what gracious demonstration of his love will you recall? We're anxious to hear. We heard some good ones just in small group this morning. Our boast is in the Lord. and Refreshments will be served. Now, I encourage you to uh, pick one up, put it on your fridge so you don't forget, and also to write out your uh, little glimpse of God's goodness because once we get up on the mic there's kind of a tendency to ramble and uh, we only have a maximum of five minutes a piece okay unless if you're good <laughs> if you're you know so I'm going to read mine uh, another one for you so you get an idea of what we're looking for just little glimpses of things that God does for us that I call everyday miracles. I learned a lot about prayer from this particular miracle. One day a lady from church commissioned me to do a painting for a young lady very dear to her who was about to be married. She wanted something special for her but left that up to me. I didn't know the girl but I asked the Lord to show me what to paint that would be a blessing to her. Weeks went by with no idea. I was blank. Well, except for a print I'd seen in passing as I was walking through a mall that kind of fascinated me. But the very afternoon of the day the painting was due, finally, with no idea what I was going to paint, 
I got out my uh, canvases and acrylics and decided to do a takeoff on that print that I'd seen in the mall. I was so unhappy with myself because I felt like I hadn't heard from the Lord. I just missed it. Well, the lady uh, was very happy with the painting, though, when she picked it up. And she called me later that evening to tell me that when the bride saw the painting, she got big tears in her eyes. And she carried the painting around with her all through her reception. This is back in the days when they opened the gifts at the, wed at the reception. That kind of dates me. But um, anyway, she carried it around with her all through the reception and even took it with her on her honeymoon. Well, about a week later, the lady who bought the painting called and asked me if I wanted to hear about the painting. Well, of course, I did. When the bridegroom and bride and groom got home from their honeymoon, the, money, the mother asked her daughter, Honey, what's the deal with the painting? Why the strong reaction to it? Oh, mother, you don't know. All those trips that you and Daddy and I made in the camper, every time we'd camp by the ocean, a lake, a stream, the morning we would pick up to leave, I'd go to the water's edge, and I'd write with a stick in the sand, God loves me. This painting is me, Mama. That's exactly what I'd painted, was a little girl by the shore riding with a stick in the sand, God loves me. I didn't know what that girl needed, but he knew. He tenderly, lovingly showed her he remembered all those years of faithful trust in his love, and this was his private affirmation to her. No one else in the whole world knew about it except her and her Heavenly Father, and he remembered. seated. Uh, you take your Bible. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. Uh, we've jumped out of Matthew 5 after a few weeks going across the Beatitudes and being salt and light, and now we're advancing into Matthew chapter 6. And then at the same time, if you would silence your phones, uh, turn them to mute, silent, off. Uh, I get people uh, just about every Sunday morning, hey, I've already turned my phone off. <laughs> I've already silenced it. Mine's right here because I had to Make sure I had the words for the first song, and it's, it's on silent. So if you try to call me, I will not answer. Page 692, uh, Ben, 1, 2, and 4 on this, please. God will take care of you, verses 1, 2, and 4. Then we'll have the pastor come this morning.
Well, I sure do like that chorus that we learned. Uh, appreciate the the little uh, the the people up here singing the little choir, uh, showing us how to sing that song. But I love that song. That's a just a real beauty. I hope we sing that again. That's for sure. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you today in the house of the Lord. Uh, you all look just fantastic. An extra hour of sleep, and man, it just makes all the difference in the world. Uh, everybody except Warren. Uh, Warren shows up an hour early and uh, he comes in. He said, I thought the pastor might have passed away or something today, but uh, come to find out I have not. And uh, he said, oh, it must be that one hour thing. And uh, so uh, but anyway, it uh, it always catches somebody and I, it's caught me a few times myself. But uh, anyway, sure, it's good to see you all here today. I look forward to getting into God's word and and uh, for the Lord to teach us uh, about uh, what he likes and what he doesn't like. Today's message is entitled, Learning to Pray God's Way. Hey, if you want to follow along in the message and fill out a couple of blanks, you're welcome to. Uh, you can take one. If uh, if you don't like that kind of thing, that's fine too. Uh, but it's available to you if you want. Just kind of raise your hand or look at these good-looking young men and say, give me one of them, and uh, they'll be happy to give it to you. And you can kind of follow your, uh, follow your way through. Dustin, Turn around there uh, a little bit. Uh, did you get one, Warren? Yeah. You did get it? Okay, very good. All right. Very good. All right. We're all on the same page. We've actually uh, transitioned into Matthew chapter 6, so we're making our way through. And uh, so uh, anyway, uh, we're on the Sermon on the Mount. So uh, let's all have a word of prayer, and uh, we'll begin here. So uh, just pause uh, for just a couple seconds here this morning. Heavenly Father, we just bow our heads and we say thank you for the day. Thank you for the gift of prayer. And our hearts and minds will be uh, focused on that this morning. And I just want to pray, Lord, that uh, you would bless as we think about one of the greatest gifts that you've ever given to mankind is the opportunity to just quiet our hearts. And uh, many times we bow our heads and close our eyes and we're right in the presence of God in the throne room of the Lord. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for this ability to communicate with you. And I pray, Lord, that we would uh, not abuse it, uh, but instead, Father, we learn how to do it your way, and we would do it often. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you would bless your people and your children as we learn about these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I want to begin today by simply uh, kind of stating some obvious things, and that is uh, concerning likes and dislikes. Uh, all of us have certain things and ways that we like to do things and then ways that we don't like things to be done. And this is why some people mesh real well with uh, other people and sometimes we don't mesh well with other people. And uh, it uh, just sometimes we resonate with one another because we like to do things uh, in a similar fashion. Uh, men and women, while we mesh well with each other in some ways, and in other ways we don't, uh, because a lot of times we are uh, the opposite. I have found in my marriage, I am the opposite. Uh, opposites do attract, and uh, my wife and I are opposite in a lot of ways. If uh, she gets out on our zero-turn mower and mows the lawn, it is different, um, she mows so that she doesn't like, we have a gravel driveway, she doesn't like any grass on the gravel driveway. Me, I do not care if all of the grass gets on the driveway, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, and so she has a way, and she likes to go around the perimeter a couple of times, and then she'll do it diagonally, like they do in those real nice lawns, you know, and it looks beautiful. Uh, when I do it, it looks like somebody was in a hurry to get this job done and maybe had a stopwatch and was saying, two hours and 15 minutes, yes! And uh, that's kind of my priority. And uh, for her, it's just like, it looks like a golf, it looks like a golf course uh, when she is done with it. My wife likes um, certain TV programs that I do not like. And she's not pushy with the clicker. Uh, but sometimes, if she's home all by herself, on the rare occasion she's home by herself, and she has a chance to actually watch TV, uh, which isn't all that, that often, but every once in a while, I will bust through the door, and she'll be all by herself, and I will look and see what she's watching. And it's usually some British uh, show about dukes and duchesses or something along that line, 
And I'm just like, going, what in the world are you watching? Uh, and she, she likes British detective shows as well. You know, those things on PBS. And uh, I would never choose to watch those kind of things. But she has certain things that she likes. She's smiling. She knows it's the truth. And uh, when she gets the clicker, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, when it comes time for shopping, uh, she's not a big shopper. I wouldn't call her a big shopper. But if she has a Kohl's card and she can save 20%, and she's going to choose the right thing for this thing, and she's in that zone, and I have to go around those round things with clothes on them, I will go with her as long as I can, and then she just looks at me. I mean, I'm, I'm being good. I'm really being good, and she just looks at me. She goes, you're done, aren't you? And it's just like, oh, man, I just uh, cannot wait to get out of here, and uh, that's just what it is. Uh, if she has a good deal and she's looking for it, she can get in there and uh, shop with the best of them. But uh, usually she's not a big shopper. But uh, if she has a Kohl's card and she has to spend it in one spot or a grandkid that has a birthday, it's got to be the right thing. Uh, I'm like years ago, we used to watch Ultraman. It was an old Chinese or Japanese uh, program. Some of you old guys might remember Ultraman. Um, but he, was, he would come down to earth and he would save us from Godzilla or whatever. But he had to go back up into space every once in a while because his chest would start beeping. And that's about the time Godzilla would grab him and he was trying to go up. And it's almost like getting air, you know. And so he had to go and it was just like he was dying. And it turns yellow and then red and, you know, Ultraman. And I'm like Ultraman when I'm shopping. It's just like it's turning red, and I'm just like going, I'm melting. I'm, I'm not going to make it. i got to get out to the car. And uh, but uh, So we look at things uh, a different way, and we do things maybe a different way. And uh, that's how we are. Sometimes when you, we work with people or whatever, we look at things maybe a little different and whatnot. And uh, God's that way, too. Um, he's different than us. He looks at things different. And uh, so we spend a whole lifetime just trying to say, well, if I were to do it, I'd do it this way. And God's saying, you know what? I don't really like it when you do it that way. I like you to do it this way. And so he has likes and dislikes. And uh, today we're going to talk about, and because he talks about it, he teaches us what he likes about when we pray and what he doesn't like about when we pray. And um, the truth is, is that um, he's just like us in that way. He has certain, he's kind of finicky about the way that we pray. What a privilege it is to pray, uh, but he has certain things that he insists on uh, concerning prayer. And so we're going to look at that, verse number five in our text, uh, Matthew 6, verse number five. He says, here's a few things I want you to know about how I like about prayer and what I don't like. And he says, when you pray, uh, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues, and in the corners of the streets, why? That they may be seen of men, right? Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now the Jews were pretty famous about enjoying getting on corners of streets and lifting up their voices in prayer to the Lord and being very articulate and uh, very poetic um, and uh, all of these kinds of things. One commentator writes, at certain times of the days, uh, they always offered their prayers. Wherever they were, they suspended their employment. They paid their devotion. Uh, and this was also practiced. Now it is practiced by Muslims and uh, in, in some places. Roman Catholics do the same thing. They just stop the day and they have prayer time and somebody will pray uh, in a loud voice. And uh, it seems also that they seek publicity uh, as they are praying. And they regard it as proof of their great piety. And so uh, the, uh, Jesus says, you know what? The truth is, me and the Father, we just don't like it when you pray like that. I don't like you enjoying getting up and praying loud in front of everybody, and, and you think that it's a sign of your piety and your spirituality because of how you pray. Uh, and so God uh, doesn't like it uh, when you uh, do that. What is it about it that he doesn't like? Uh, the Bible says it's when in their heart, uh, what's our uh, verse number five says, that they may be seen of men. So this is an interior thing that's going on inside of us that he doesn't like. And when it pops up and we're prone to it, uh, he says, I don't like it when you uh, like to show off how good uh, of a prayer uh, you can pray. 
And so he calls into, into question this. And so uh, point number one is our father likes sincere prayer. That's the kind of prayer he likes. And so um, when we uh, uh, love to be seen of men by how we pray, that calls into question their sincerity. And so the father is just saying, here's what I like. I like it when you aren't thinking about what everyone else is thinking, but instead you're just focused on me and you're praying for real. And those are the kind of prayers uh, that I like. See, prayer was never designed by God to promote one's spiritual status in the eyes of other people. That is, that is a uh, misrepresentation. It is a misuse of prayer so that others will have a different perspective of you because of how you pray. And it shouldn't even be on our minds at all. We should be praying with one thought in mind, and that is a vertical communication should be on our mind, and that's it. And anytime it strays from that, anytime there's a hint of anything else, we, we know this much, is that God is no longer listening. Your prayer is indeed bouncing off of the ceiling and coming right back to you. And so... Um, Leave it to man, though. Leave it to man to take one of the greatest gifts that, man, that God has ever given to mankind, and we can ruin it. And that's what, we've, that's what we do with God's greatest gifts, As many times we ruin it. We misuse it. We use it for something other than what it's supposed to be. The beauty of the Garden of Eden was ruined with pride and rebellion uh, came into it. The marital relationship, which is a beautiful gift that God has given to mankind over the years, is now a cheap and tawdry thing uh, that is reserved for uh, perversion. It is dirty, it's selfish, and uh, all of these other kinds of things. And so we take that great gift and we ruin it. The food that God has given to us, uh, we ruin it. We, we ruin it with gluttonous and uh, eating the wrong kinds of things and and all of these kinds of things. What a great gift food is and how satisfying it is. Uh, but we ruin that thing too. And so it seems like as we look at all the great gifts that God's given to us, it seems like one by one it just checks off that we have this way of misusing it and abusing it. And prayer is no exception. And so prayer is something that is uh, ruined many times. Uh, we ruin prayer when we approach his throne in an insincere way. And rest assured, when we do, God's not there. Jesus, on another passage, actually it's uh, Luke chapter 6, uh, he has an illustration of a Pharisee that he, he witnessed uh, that was praying out loud like Pharisees do. And he was saying, what was he saying? Oh, thank God that I'm not a sinner such as this man. Oh, thank God that I fast often. Thank God that I give my tithe uh, and I tithe all of these things. Let me just read to you what Luke chapter 6 says. He says, The Pharisee stood and he prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Now, there's another one that's praying as well, and he's beating his chest as he's praying. And he says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what the publican was saying, the sinner and he would not so much as lift up his eyes unto heaven. He smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, Jesus says, of the two, verse 14, he says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. He says, essentially, Jesus is saying this. I tell you that God heard the prayer of the publican, but he didn't even hear the prayer of the, of the Pharisee. He's not even listening anymore. I tell you, there's only one of those two that were praying that God even heard. And it wasn't the one that was full of pride and was telling God how good he was. And so if you're going to pray, you better make sure that God is your focus and you need to be remembering of a couple of things. You need to be real. If there's ever a time in your life to take down all the facades, if there's ever a time in your life to be real, and I mean really real, it's when you bow the knee, you bow your head, and you close your eyes to enter into the throne of God, if you're ever going to be real, it better be in that moment. Otherwise, it is vanity. It is worthless because it's not going anywhere because he insists on prayer to be real. So remember to be real. Remember that it's a privilege. It's just an amazing gift that God decided, you know what? I'm going to give mankind the ability to pray. 
I'm going to give mankind the ability to come into my presence. I'm going to write Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 14 and 15 and say, uh, come, unto the, come boldly into the throne of grace that you may find help in your time of need. You can find grace and help when you have need. Come boldly to me. Ask and it shall be given to you is what the scriptures say. And so he, he makes it very clear. I want you to talk to me. Many times James, the book of James says you have not because you ask not. And so he says, uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Come to me, talk to me about it, and you watch how I'm going to help you uh, as you go through life. And so remember, to be real, but remember, it's a privilege. What a great gift it is. And remember also that insincerity is the fastest way out the door and the fastest way for God's presence to be removed. And so prayer done right will be rewarded, the scripture says, but prayer done wrong will be rewarded as well. Did you see that in verse number five? Look with me if you would. Verse number five, what's the last four words of those who pray in a wrong way? What's the last four words? Let's say them. They will have their reward. I don't think that that's in a good way. I think that's somewhat of an ominous four words, to be honest with you. You have your reward as well. And so God is, uh, uh, is not patient with this idea of approaching him in the wrong way. So our Father likes sincere prayers. Number two, the second thing we learn, verse number six, but when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, you can underline a few of these words. These are keys. Enters into his closet, shuts thy door. Pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy father which is, seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Our father likes secret prayers. That's how he likes it. And here's the nice thing about this, and God knows who we are, is that when we're all by yourself, there's no temptation to impress anybody because there's no one else there. It's just you and the Lord. You see, that's what prayer was designed to be. Uh, certainly there are collect, there, there's moments for collective prayer, and I... I wanted to make this, that's my disclaimer, is there, I love times where we uh, all are burdened about certain things and we hold hands and pray and, and that kind of, there's moments for collective prayer. But I'm just saying here this morning that for the, the lion's share of your praying, God loves it when you are all by yourself and you're weeping out to him and crying out to him and asking him for this or, or rejoicing in how he's helped you in that. Uh, and this quiet relationship with the, with the Lord is wonderful. See, the fastest way to point one, sincerity, is secrecy. The fastest way to, to sincerity is through secret prayers where no one is around. See, the true purpose and design for prayer is that it's to be the creator with the created. It's to be the master with the servant. It's to be the father with the child, and he is very interested in your personal relationship with him. That's what he's interested in. I want to get to know you better, and I want you to get to know me better, and this is our time together, and there's nothing better than when you get that alone time, and I don't know how many of you kneel, and I know sometimes we get physical problems where it's harder to kneel, but um, if you're a kneeler, I love that. If you kneel by your bed, if you have the ability to kneel by your bed. I don't know if there's any of you in here that are lay, lay or flat out, you know, the type that just lays flat out on the floor and gets alone with the Lord. Many times we find great men of God, that's how they pray. They laid flat out before the Lord. And not to uh, be able to find it easier to go to sleep, uh, but you do it in a, in a spirit of humbling yourself before the Lord. Uh, I don't know of anybody in the world that I would ever lay flat out for except one, and that's for Jesus Christ. And I believe the first time you see the Lord, many times we, um, those who have seen the Lord in his glory, that's the first thing they do is they fall on their face before the Lord. So why not get used to doing that? I, 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 I don't mind that posture as well. It's not, there's no, I can't show you a verse anywhere that says, hey, if you want to pray. That's not one of our points today is to lay flat on your face. The, the, the Father likes it when we lay flat on our face. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying I see a lot in the scriptures that do that, and they model for me 
uh, a good thing to, to do, and a good reason to do it is out of humility uh, before the Lord. And so this is a, a time to uh, pray to the Lord. I don't know, uh, we're uh, a lot of Baptists in the room here, and so I don't know if there's any raise, raising hands kind of people here. I know, I got, I got a couple, I see you're back there, all right, very good. Um, but boy, when you're by yourself, there's nothing cooler than just to raise your hands. And it's a scriptural thing too, uh, to raise your hand to the Lord. And um, I raise my hand to the Lord a lot of times uh, on the, uh, in the big and the little, so in, in the good and the bad. So when God has just saved my bacon and he's just really blessed me with something that I didn't see coming, but I know it was from the Lord, uh, I like to say, Lord, that was you. That was just all you. And then sometimes when I'm crying out to the Lord because I'm in distress, uh, sometimes I'll do that too. I'll, I'll raise my hand to the Lord. Nothing wrong with that at all. I love that. The Father, lo- as long as it's what? Point one, sincere. It's got to be sincere. But if it is sincere, boy, that's, that's a great thing uh, before the Lord. And so the Lord loves it when we're totally transparent and uh, we do this uh, before him, completely humble. Admitting your faults, admitting your weaknesses, admitting your problems, just between you and him, and uh, him helping you through this life. You want to do just a time out for just a second. You want to do just a little Bible study? There's a lot of things that uh, the Father likes that are in secret, okay? I'm not having to turn to another scripture or anything, but look at verse number three and four. What does he like in secret? If we were to read verse number three and four, and, and I won't, but you can peruse it there. Essentially, alms, if, it, if you see the word alms there, that means you're offering to the Lord. You're giving back to the Lord. What does he like? He likes that to be done in secret. Verse number three and four. Verse number six says that he likes his prayers to be in secret. But then look at verse number 16. What else? Jesus is teaching, and we might get to some of this later on, but not today, but what else? Verse number 16, what is that? Fasting. Are we supposed to do it in a way that everybody knows where we contort our face and go, oh, man, I haven't eaten for like 24 hours, and I am just, of course, I'm fasting. You know, I, you know, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm pretty close to the Lord, and I'm doing my fasting. Uh, he hates that. So uh, I just thought that it was interesting in one chapter in this cons- concerted way he's teaching how many times a secrecy is uh, important to him and prayer is certainly one of those and so um, God's interested God likes things to be just between you and him and uh, prayer is one of those things and we're already ready for number three Uh, and so let's look at verse number seven but when you pray use not vain reputation repetitions saying the same thing over and over and over again As heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard by their much speaking. If I just ask him a hundred times in a row, you know, uh, leave it to man to take something that's beautiful and wonderful and try to manipulate it to where I think I I prayed a hundred times one time and and then all of a sudden he just answered. And so I think that's how it works. Oh, great. So now I can just rub the genie bottle and I can do it if I say it enough times. I'll get my way. He says, I I don't like it when you'd use vain repetition. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you even ask. So he knows it. You don't have to ask him a hundred times. So some people think if uh, if I pray in this manner, God's going to answer. So he's essentially just saying, don't pray that way. Uh, The father doesn't like it. Do you like it when your ch- children come up going, can I have a candy bar? Can I have a candy bar? Can I have candy? Can I have candy? When you're at the Walmart uh, in the line, do you like that? No, we don't like that. And uh, that's not what the Lord uh, likes as well. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with being consistent. I pray for the same people every night, but I don't say it every moment of the day. But uh, I am praying for people for healing and for things of that nature. And, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. But this vain repetition, and we have to be careful about this. This is kind of more of a bad habit that we can, sometimes we say, oh, Jesus, 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 oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I just wonder how he feels about that. I wonder if this is applicable to this vain repetition thing. Here, here's the thing. Uh, this particular word, vain repetition, is a, uh, is a uh, Greek word, uh, battle 
uh, logio, batologio, and it denotes babbling, speaking without thinking. You're not really thinking about what you're saying. You're just saying it a number of times. And you say something over and over again, or you say something without uh, thinking. And so I just wonder, I'm just wondering this morning, how our Father thinks about those kind of prayers. Sometimes I wonder how he thinks about how we uh, say grace at the table. We have to be very conscious about getting into a habit of a prayer, you know, which we all can do. Lord, thank you for this food. Bless you to the nourishment of our body. In Jesus' name, amen. I can say that without ever even thinking about him actually providing that food for me or having one appreciative bone in my body, but I can say it out of rote, out of, uh, you know, out of, out of repetition, out of uh, just tradition, if you will. And so um, some people's strategy uh, is to pray for hours uh, on the same thing. Sometimes we pray for things with the same exact prayer, and we have to be careful of that. Uh, because God likes smart prayers too, not ones that are done without even uh, thinking about it. And so um, we are to utter these prayers. So uh, just don't utter prayers uh, where you lose track of what you're saying. I think that uh, denotes the uh, message here. And of course we don't, and I'm not m meaning to dog on Catholics or anything, but sometimes uh, they believe in Hail Marys and things of that nature, which, as I understand it, you have to do it a certain number of times. Uh, I just think that it's uh, inappropriate for true prayer uh, to do anything over and over and over again. Uh, you think that's making roads with somebody, but um, it, it obviously is not. And so uh, we have to be careful about that. And so uh, it matters what I say. It matters how I say it. It matters the spirit with which I say it if I'm going to partake in this glorious gift that God has given to us. And so uh, we are to, uh, to pray and get down to business. No faking uh, prayers, no mindless words. Uh, he's not impressed by your repetition. And let's just do real prayer. Let's just get into the point where you wake up in the morning and you truly are thankful for the day. This is the day the Lord has made. He's given me one more day of life and I'm breathing it in and the sun is coming up and I'm thankful for his blessings and I'm appreciative of all that he's done for me. Help me to live this day for you should be our prayer to him and we should mean it. Change my life today. Teach me more about you. Teach me how to become the child that is uh, 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 pleasing in your eyes. Help me to be pleasing in your eyes. And so let's get down to this business of prayer. Understand what it is and understand the sweet spot of what it can be in this beautiful gift that God has given to, to, you, to us. And so it is a wonderful thing to connect. So essentially, what is prayer? Prayer is a moment where we are connecting with the Father. And we are into that. We are, as human beings, we are into connecting with others through language. And we enjoy being able to speak the same language with somebody else and communicate our thoughts and talk about things and, and things of that, that nature. Uh, it's good. The whole idea of prayer is just communication. And we're hardwired for that thing. And we are driven toward it. And we should know that by now. I mean... Um, Years ago, we would communicate and we would find all kinds of ways to communicate. The um, Native Americans, the Indians would uh, communicate with smoke signals. Um, I did a little research on that this week, actually, and found that they're not the only ones that would do that. The, um, uh, the Chinese on the Great Wall of China, every tower, they had certain smoke signals if enemies were attacking. And it was all for the purpose of communication. And they would be able to communicate. I actually read... Uh, it was on Wikipedia, so it's got to be true. Um, that within an hour or two, they, would, uh, th they had the ability to communicate over 470 mile distance within an hour through smoke signals and through these different signals that we have. And so this idea of communicating is just fascinating to mankind. And I, I thought that it was pretty interesting that that much territory could be communicated with uh, so quickly. Uh, well, where we live right now, just a, a mile north of here, is a location called Signal Hill. 
and uh, in history, and I don't even know the history. I'm sure that uh, Lauren knows all the history of Signal. Go ask him. He knows everything about it. But from what I understand, there were some things done with lanterns, and, and it would signal to Lawrence uh, whether somebody was coming or something of that nature. I need to go by and read the, the sign, I guess. But um, we love communicating in different ways and finding different ways of doing it. How many of you uh, years ago uh, remember the old telephone systems? They used to have party lines, and we thought that was the greatest thing in the world, to be able to speak on uh, party lines. Matter of fact, when I was a kid, it seems like we had something of that nature. Um, when I was a kid, we had the rotary dial and uh, those kind of phones, and uh, loved it, you know, loved communicating in that way. And then uh, many years ago, now some of these kids, I'll say words, they don't even know what this is. Uh, there was this thing that was invented and we would wear them on our hips. Doctors started wearing them first, uh, and they were called a pager. We thought that was the coolest thing. I mean, technology. And we would get a little buzz on our, on our belt. I had a little business, and, and so on there, I had my little phone number that I could get, and I, somebody called me. It didn't say anything but the phone number. And so and then I would go call that number, and it would be another person wanting some kind of business of, of, or my wife calling to... Uh, you know, try to get a hold of me. And I'd have to go find a phone someplace, put quarters in it, and then uh, call her. Uh, but I remember that. And then, of course, the, uh, the cell phone came out, and it was big as a paper towel. And uh, you had to put out this antenna about three foot long, and then you'd put it up there, and you'd be able to call, and there's no cords to it or anything. And all of us old people, we, we looked at that and we go, oh, my, what is the world coming to? We couldn't even believe it. And then, of course, after that comes the cell phone and then tech, uh, texting. We thought, what in the world? And email, and I'm not into Twitter. I've never Twittered in my life, and rarely do I ever get on Facebook. Do you know what all of these things are? It's our ability to communicate and our desire to communicate. That's all it is. It's an ability to communicate. We have hardwired within us something that, uh, in terms of speaking to our creator, there is a desire in there. And there is something, if you let it grow, it can grow and it can become one of the most beautiful lines of communication that you've ever experienced in your life. And uh, we are developed for that. It is what we are here to do. And so there are rewards for this when we communicate with the Lord. Look at verse number six. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Interesting last four words there too. He says, you know what? He's going, there is rewards for those who pray to the Lord. There is peace that's available to those who pray for it. There is fulfillment. You will be fulfilled in your life for those who enter into this idea of prayer. Their grace will be bestowed upon you that you never had before. Strength will be given to you that you never thought you ever had because we've prayed to the Father for it and he will reward thee openly. Your life, the sum total of your life, there will be a blessing upon you that people will be able to see because you're a prayer warrior. And it is something that you've entered into and you've found that it is a treasure. And you wouldn't want to go through a day without praying. Throughout the day, in the morning, at noon, at night before you pillow your bed. You wouldn't even think about uh, going to sleep without entering into prayer. There's no amount of tiredness that you could ever experience without saying, I'm not too tired to pray. Because I want to close my day by thanking God for that. You can get to that point. I suppose this morning, if there's a problem in this room, if there's a need with us as a church, if there is a, uh, uh, if, there, if there's a problem, if there's a need, if there's a fulfillment, if there's something that uh, we need this morning, uh, it is that we pray too little. We really do. And so we have to understand this is what God wants us to do. God wants you to pray more. You know, I look at anyone that God ever used. David, he prayed all the time. Praises and uh, cries for help. He prayed all the time. Daniel, when his life was crumbling around him, had this way of 
whispering a prayer to the Lord. All of the king's uh, officers are going to be killed. Why? And then he just prays to the Lord. Well, I can interpret a dream, he would say. And he's, but before he would say that, he would whisper this prayer uh, to the Lord as well. Jesus prayed. Hey, if there's any reason at all for you to be a prayer warrior, to realize that the Son of God, look at how many times in the Gospels he set aside time to pray to his Father's will. If Jesus knew about it, if Jesus needed it, then you need it as well. I suppose if there's a challenge here this morning, the challenge is just to look honestly at your life and say, do I pray the way that I should? Do I pray for others that are in need? Do I pray for my life? Do I uh, show appreciation to the Lord and give thanksgiving to the Lord like I should? The Bible says is that we are to pray uh, without ceasing. We are to always be praying to the Lord. There's always something that you can say to him, a way that you can grow closer to him. And so if there's a need here this morning that's in your life, it's that you need to learn to pray more. And I need to learn to pray more. And I need to get in touch with him. And then the Bible says, if I do it in the right way, God will begin to bless my life because I have grown in that master to servant relationship, that father to child relationship. And it's real and it's true and it's endearing and it's growing me in my faith. And so God wants you to pray. And if you have a need this morning, it's probably you need to pray more. But if you go out of these doors here today and it's going to be prayer, is your challenge. Make sure you do it with sincerity. Uh, really grow in the fact that you should do it secretly. And then do it smartly, <laughs> if that's a word. Uh, do it the way he wants. Not vain repetition, but here, here's, here's the best advice I can give you. Pray like he's your friend. Talk to him about everything. And try to use these and thous, very, very limited. <laughs> uh, just talk to him like you would your neighbor, Talk to him like you would your own father. Talk to him like you would a friend. And then you're getting somewhere in terms of prayer and how he wants. And go ahead. Do it. Come boldly before the throne of grace that you may find help in your time of need. Go ahead and get that peace. Get that help. Get that comfort that he wants to give you. Develop, develop that enduring friendship that he wants to have with you that will continue on throughout all of eternity. Pray more. Pray the right way. Amen? And this is what Jesus wants to tell me, and I believe he wants to tell all of us, become more of a people of prayer. Amen. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for teaching us today. And uh, Lord, I will admit it, I, I am one as well. I'm sure that there are moments that I take prayer for granted but I am drawn to it. I want to communicate to you. And I want to tell you how great and awesome you are. I want to worship you through this communication. I want to, I want to come to you for when I need help. And I, this past week, I, I needed help. And uh, Father, you helped me. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Father, that I can come to you when I fail you. Nothing's better than to be able to communicate and reconcile with someone that needs to be reconciled. And there are moments that I have to reconcile, and it's so good to know that you're right there for that too, for admission and uh, commission and uh, to be able to commit things to you too, Father. So, Lord, would you bless these people, and Father, would you help us to remember how important prayer is in our lives and what a great and wonderful and mighty gift. It may be the greatest gift you've ever given to us, short of the salvation through Jesus Christ himself. Father, this is the great gift, and we thank you, Lord, for it. Help us to in, uh, investigate it this week and become better at it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask these things. Amen. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed this morning, we think about what we've heard. Think about how God has spoken to us. How much time did you spend this week in prayer? When was the last time you knelt before him? When was the last time you've filled your heart with joy and thanked him for a blessing in your heart and your life. He's not just a 911 call, you know. He's a God that wants a full relationship with you. Not just a genie in a bottle. Not just to be there for when you're having your worst days and everything else has failed and you're at the bottom of the barrel. 
And the last thing that you go to is prayer. No, no, no. He wants to be more than that. He does want to be your father. He does want to be your master. He does want to be your God. But he also wants to be your friend. And the only way he can do that is if we come into his presence with thanksgiving. Next week or the week uh, after, we're going to talk about how he wants us to pray. And uh, we get the model prayer and what a beautiful thing that is. Oh, Father, I pray that we would not leave this room without being challenged and meeting that challenge and answering that challenge by saying, God, you've spoken to me today. Maybe there's one person here this morning or a few people that say, God, you've spoken to my heart about prayer today and I want to answer you in this way and commit to you that I'm going to begin my day in prayer or end my day in prayer or I want to have a secret time with you where I get down on my hands and knees and I bow in submission to you. Oh, Father in heaven, I pray that you would help these people to... Uh, to meet you this morning and answer this by a commitment that they make in their heart and their life. Father, if there's anyone that wants to come forward and pray with me this morning, Father, I pray that you would give them freedom to do that as I would love to pray with someone this morning that's in need. And I just pray, Lord, you'd bless this invitation time as we started at this moment. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I tell you, if God has spoken to your heart today, would you answer him as Dan leads us in, in an invitation song. Meet with the Lord this morning. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, so much for the gift of prayer. And I pray, Lord, that uh, as you look down upon our church collectively, I pray, Father, that this would be a praying church, that we would pray for one another. And Father, if there's anyone here today that wants to get on the email list of uh, the prayer request list, I pray, Father, that they would uh, come forward and say, I want to be on that list and pray for people in our church and the people that we are praying for, even outside of our church. And so I want to pray, Lord, that uh, you would help us to be a praying people and to take it very seriously. And we will thank you, Lord, and praise your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. You are dismissed. Thank you.